Hey friends, this is Jose and I am so glad to be back on YouTube. So th let's start with this teaching that I have today on what is called apostleship. Now, apostleship is a unique word that only appears three or four times in the New Testament, as a matter of fact, in the whole Bible. Whereas the apostle is one of the fivefold ministries and we're not going to talk about apostles today. The apostleship is what God is sending the apostle, or I would say it does not only have to be an apostle, it can be any kind of ministry it has an apostleship. It's the sending forth of the dispatching, the creating of the ministry that God has for you, the calling the giftings all meshed together is the apostleship. Let me read to you a few scriptures where this word apostleship appears. There's four. I'm going to read to you three. This is Paul talking about his apostleship, and it's in Romans 1 verse 5, where he says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations, for His name, for the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9 and 2, If I be not an, an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am unto you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. So you see, it's the apostle, but the apostleship is the sending out, is the creation is the meshing together of the giftings, the grace, and the callings that God has. <clears throat> Galatians 2 verse 8. Paul says, For he that wrought or energized effectually in Peter to the apostleship, the sending out of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. So we see this. Now, before I start, I, wanna, I want you to jot down three very important words here. Apostleship, we're going to talk about that in a moment. Grace. Many times we think that grace is simply the unmerited favor of God, and rightfully it is. But grace is a lot more than the unmerited favor of God. I'm going to quiz you right now, and you tell me what it means. 1 Corinthians 15 and 9, and 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. Here's the Apostle Paul speaking. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Listen, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Here, here's the giveaway. I labored more abundantly than the other apostles. But then he says, but yet not me, but the grace of God which was with me. So what is grace? Grace, my friends, is labor. In this case, it is the superhuman labor of God. But I labored more abundantly than they all, but, the, but they says, but oh no, but it was not my, it was, not, it was not I who labored, but the grace of God which was with me. That's very important. So when we talk about grace in these scriptures of Paul, Paul's really not talking so much about unmerited favor. He is, but many times when God talks about grace in his ministry, he's talking about superhuman labor. And as we cease from our own efforts and walk in the Spirit, we start to feel God's labor more in us. That's one word. The other word that Paul uses a lot is the word dispensation. Dispensation is a massive word. Really, it comes from two words, which means oikonomia. Oikos is house. We've heard of oikos yogurt, house. Nomia comes from the word nomos, 
which is the word for law. It's the law of the house. In, in, in effectuality, a dispensation is the management of part of God's house, God's kingdom, God's giftings, God's, God's uh, uh, callings. My friends, I want you to hear me. Every person, every Christian that calls himself a Christian, that is filled with the Holy Spirit, has a dispensation. I see many passive Christians, many aimless Christians. That's not, that's not Christianity. If you're a Christian, God has called you to be responsible and committed to manage part of His house, part of His kingdom. And you need to find out, it's essential, what is, the, what is your management of God's kingdom? Why? Because in Philemon, or Philemon, verse 6, which is a one-chapter book, it says that the sharing of your faith may become energized by your precise, thorough, and accurate, and deep knowledge of every good thing that Christ has placed within you. Do you know what Christ has placed within you? God gives us gifts because God's invisible and His gifts are what manifest Him. His gifts create our ministries. And our ministries create our calling and our calling really creates our dispensation. that the sharing of your faith becomes energized in proportion to the precise and thorough knowledge of every gift, every ministry, every calling, and the dispensation that God has commanded you to fulfill here on earth. The more that you know these things, the more that God's energy will work for you because God energizes His will, not yours, not mine. God energizes His counsels, not mine, not yours. Why do we see so many depressed and oppressed Christians are always saying, the devil has attacked me, I've been so beaten up by the devil. You know why? Because they have no idea or little idea of the giftings, the ministries, the callings and the dispensation that God has given to us. If we're going to, if we're going to see the bride of Christ presented in His purity, if we're going to see, if we're going to be called into this harvest that is coming out of COVID, we need to know these things, and we we need to know what is the dispensation, what is the management of God's house that belongs to you and me, especially in this time of the harvest. So Paul was very keen to press into his dispensation. Colossians 1 25 it says, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation, the management of God's household, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Part of Paul's dispensation was and that word to fulfill means to fill the Word of God. That means part of his dispensation was to give a full revelation of the Word of God. That was part of the management of his household, of God's household. That's in Colossians 1 and 25. And we're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. Ephesians 3 and 2. We see Paul again saying, If you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. What is grace? The superhuman labor of God. God has given me a management of His superhuman labor in my life. You understand this? It's always on behalf of other people. I'm sorry. 
for I'm tapping this this microphone. It was always on behalf. Forgive me. It's my first time doing this. Well, fix all these bugs of touching the microphones and all that stuff. Okay. Paul was always keen about the labor of God. He said, I never labored. It was God laboring in me. And we're going to talk about that. Let, let's talk about labor right now. Here Paul talks about the dispensation to fill the Word of God. We're going to talk about this right now, Colossians 1 and 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation, the management of God's household, of God's kingdom, given to me, given to Paul, on behalf of you, on behalf of the world. The power of God, the giftings of God, the dispensations of God are never for us. They are they are energized, they are made manifest as we go into the harvest to fulfill the Word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to His saints. Verse 27 of Colossians 1. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of, the, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 28. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. We're not going to be that. Can't talk about this today. Now listen. Verse 29. Were unto I labor. Now, labor is the word kopizo. And that's labor. There's a difference between a casual job, my friends, and labor. How would you define labor? How would you define labor? It's hard work. This is why there cannot be lazy Christians. Sometimes I see in this world a lot of lazy Christians. Paul says, I was laboring. We've, there's, a, there's a harvest. If you're not ready for the harvest, then labor to present your soul cleansed to become free. But my friends, the Christian life is never a lazy life. It's a life of total proactivity. The word where it says, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. The word for willing is the word prothumos. Thumos comes up from the word for fire, fervency, boiling. The Holy Spirit is always boiling. He's always on fire. He's always going forward. He's always at labor. And so must we. We must be in the spirit, not in the flesh, the hardest working people there are. But not hard, not hard by just, uh, uh, you know, misguided labor, but laboring by the spirit of God. We're on to I labor, striving according to his working. Now listen, striving is the word agonisomai. And that's where the word agony comes from. Now here is not an agony of going, ooh. It's, this is a, 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 an athletic word. It means the agony of an athlete who wants to win the Olympics, who wants to win the games. He's agonizing, he's training, he's exercising, he's running faster than any other person. So he labors in the spirit according and he, uh, he's laboring, agonizing, athletically, according to God's energy. See, what does that tell you? That tells you that our discernment of the Holy Spirit must be so darn accurate. We must be in tune with, learn to be in tune with the Holy Spirit from second to second, so that we can be striving, agonizing, athletic agonizing by his energy from moment to moment laboring in the spirits you understand that that means that you got to become whole you got to you got to become free you got to get rid of bitterness you got to get rid of fear you got to get rid of uh, of of uh, you know of oppression of depression you must pay the, the price to become free where Jesus says, where, where, where Paul says, you know, for it's God who wills and works. 
I forget he says, but he says, sorry, I thought it was written. He says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You work out your salvation. I work out my salvation. The word working out is the word katergasomai. And it means complete everything. Obey everything that God tells you to. It means to leave no stone unturned. It means that everything that God does, it you, you execute it. You accomplish it. That's the price of becoming free. And we must become free if we're going to be in such contact from second to second with the raw contact of the Spirit of God. It's the raw contact, clean. No depression, no oppression. It must be just in, you know, spirit to spirit contact. Because it's the Spirit of God that is, that, that is causing us to labor by His energy to athletically agonize in power from moment to moment. So this is the word dispensation. And Paul says the word grace is superhuman labor. Now to finish what I'm going to talk about, let me see here. All right. Now what is apostleship? Great revelation of apostleship. Apostleship really means to be made. God not only wants to give you His giftings, God not only wants to give you your ministries, He also wants to make you into the person that He's called you to be. He wants to make you into the apostle. This is so vital. We think of, and I thought, of just God giving me gifts, God giving me, God sending me out. No, God, God not only wants to give you gifts, He wants to make you into the very person that He created you to be. He wants to make you into the apostle, the person of the apostle, the apostle with the ministry for the day. He wants to make you into the prophet, the he into the unique prophet, not only the giftings, make the whole person of you. That's apostleship. The apostleship is the making of the apostle. God's a creator, the creating of, of the minister, the unique minister that only you can minister in that way and no one else can but you. I love this. Listen. 1 Corinthians 15 and 9. For I am the least of the apostles, says Paul, that I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace, the labor of God, here's the apostleship. I am what I am. God made Paul to be what he is. God made Paul to be the unique apostle that he is. How exciting! That God, you have, God wants to make you into the person, into the minister that no one else is. How, how, how exciting. Not only does he make himself responsible to make you the giftings, but he wants to make himself responsible to make you into the person. Look at this. Look at this. Colossians 1 25. Here, here's Paul describing his apostleship. Colossians 1 25, whereof I am made a minister, hallelujah. I am become a minister, that's apostleship. Whereof I am made a minister, different to any other minister in this world. I, Paul the minister, my apostleship is, God has made me according to the dispensation of God. Before you can be made, into the unique minister that God's called you to be, you have to know something about what responsibility, what management of God's household do you have on this earth? Where, you notice that? Whereof I was made a minister. Not just the giftings, but made. One more time. Ephesians 3 verse 8. Paul says again, 
whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, according to the gift of the labor. See, God has a specific superhuman labor that will, that will create the part of the dispensation of God's household that you are made for. And then he'll make you into the minister that can fulfill that dispensation. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the energy of his power. So you begin to get it. Paul says here, Galatians 2, verse 7 and 8, and we're going to finish. But contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of the, uncirc of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of circumcision was unto Peter. For he that energized in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, see, he created Paul, he created Peter to be, he made him into the person that was going to reach the circumcision. The same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Paul was made into the minister towards the Gentiles. So you're getting a feel, my friends, as we finish today. You're getting a feel that there's a lot more to the Christian life than just going to church, hearing a sermon, going home. My friends, there's so much more. And there's a great harvest that is happening right now. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm entreating you as a father with his sons and daughters. I'm entreating you to get on, get in line with God's program. Get, I mean, church is important. I belong to a wonderful church, but it has to go past the church, past the pulpit, past the sermon, past the tithe, past the offering. It has to go past me. If you're stuck in that, you're only a small portion of the way. There is a dispensation, a management of God's household. There's superhuman labor that God has given specifically to you to make you into the unique person, the apostleship for this day, for this hour, and for this time to the world. God bless you, my friends, and we'll see you soon. Amen and amen.